everybody, and welcome. Today we're diving deep into a topic that's absolutely crucial in healthcare today, interoperability. It's really fascinating. And honestly, it has the potential to totally change how we think about healthcare, like how we manage our own health data, how doctors make decisions. Uh, yeah, for sure. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I think we need to start with the basics. What exactly is interoperability in healthcare? You know, it really is more than just a buzzword. At its core, interoperability is about different healthcare systems, you know, like devices, apps, being able to communicate and share data. Imagine a world where your medical records just effortlessly follow you wherever you go for care. Okay, so instead of everything being stuck in separate systems, it's all connected and the information can flow freely. Exactly. You could almost think of it like a universal translator for all of this healthcare data. You know, it helps all these different systems to speak the same language to make sure that the right information is available at the right time. And to do that, yeah. you know, to really make sure everything works together, there are some key standards that help guide this communication. You might have heard of HL7, F-H-I-R, that stands for Fast Healthcare Interoperability Resources. F-H-I-R, okay, I've heard of that. But why should we care? What's the big deal about all of this data sharing? I mean, it sounds like cool technology and all, but what does it actually mean for patients, for people like me? This is where it gets really exciting. Interoperability isn't just about the tech. It's about improving how we care for patients, you know, in a way that actually makes a difference. Imagine if your doctor could just instantly see your complete medical history, allergies, medications, everything, even if you've been seen at different hospitals. Wow, that would be amazing. You know, I always feel like I'm forgetting something important when I see a new specialist. I have to repeat my whole medical history every single time. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Not only is it a huge hassle for patients, but it can also lead to, you know, mistakes if important information gets missed. With a full picture of your health data, doctors can make better decisions, and that means better diagnoses, more personalized treatments. So for conditions like diabetes or heart disease where tracking everything is so important, this could be huge, right? Absolutely. Think about it. Data from glucose monitors, insulin pumps, wearables, all that feeding directly into a patient's electronic health record. Doctors would be able to monitor their patient's health in real time, you know, and that means they can step in proactively when they need to. It's a real shift from reactive care to a more preventative approach. That's incredible. But I also want to understand how this works in the real world. Is it as simple as flipping a switch and all of a sudden all the healthcare systems are talking to each other? Well, not quite. It's definitely a journey and we're still in the early stages, but we're making progress. One way to understand this progress is through the four levels of interoperability. They kind of build on top of each other. The most basic is foundational interoperability. It's basically the ability to exchange any data between two systems. So they can send a message, but they might not understand what it means. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Like if a lab sends a PDF report to your doctor, the data is transmitted, sure, but it's not really usable because the doctor's system might not be able to, you know, interpret that PDF. So it's a start, but it's not that seamless integration we're aiming for. Got it. So what's the next level up? That would be structural interoperability. Here, the data is exchanged in a standardized format, something that computers can understand. It's like sending a well-formatted email instead of just a plain text message. Now the receiving system can actually read the data. So it's more organized and it's machine readable, which makes it easier to use. Exactly. A classic example of this is using HL7 v2 messages to share lab results. They have a specific structure that makes it easy for the receiving system to process the data and display it correctly. It sounds like we're moving in the right direction. Are there even more advanced levels of interoperability? There are. The third level is semantic interoperability. And this is where it really gets interesting. It's not just about sharing data. It's about making sure the systems can actually understand the meaning of that data. So it's like going beyond just reading the words to understanding what they actually mean. I like that. That's a perfect way to put it. That's where standardized vocabularies become really important. For example, Imagine a doctor is sharing notes about your condition with a specialist, right? If their systems are using different terms, it could lead to all sorts of confusion. But if they're using standardized vocabularies, it's like everyone's speaking the same language. And the computer can actually understand the clinical context of the data. That makes a lot of sense. So it's all about getting rid of any ambiguity and making sure everyone is on the same page. Is there one last level in this interoperability pyramid? There is. It's the most comprehensive one called organizational interoperability. 
This one goes beyond just the technical side of sharing data and looks at the policies, governance, and workflows that support seamless and secure data sharing between you know, whole organizations. Okay, so it's not just about the technology itself. It's also about the human side and the systems that control how data is used and shared. Exactly. It's like setting up clear communication channels and protocols for different teams to work together effectively. This is where organizations like health information exchanges, HIEs, come into play. Right, HIEs. They're the ones that help different healthcare providers share data, right? That's right. They act like a kind of intermediary, connecting all these different healthcare networks and allowing information to flow freely. This is all so fascinating. We've gone from simply exchanging data to computers understanding the meaning of medical information to entire organizations being able to collaborate seamlessly. It really sounds like interoperability has the potential to revolutionize healthcare, but I'm guessing there are still some bumps in the road. What are some of the challenges to achieving this vision? You're definitely right. It's not all smooth sailing. There are some very real world challenges that we need to face head on. Welcome back. So before the break, we were talking about those challenges that come with, you know, making all this healthcare data interoperable. And I have to say, you know, with all the headlines we see about data breaches and all that, I'm a little concerned about privacy. I think that's a really valid concern. Anytime you're dealing with sensitive information, especially health data, security has to be the top priority. And when you have data moving between all these different systems, the chances for, you know, a breach increase. So it's not just about building these systems that can talk to each other. It's about making sure those conversations are happening, you know, in, in a secure environment. So how are we addressing that? There are a lot of different layers to that. We start with strong cybersecurity measures. Yeah. You know, things like firewalls, encryption, intrusion detection, all that stuff you'd expect in a secure digital environment. But it goes beyond just the technology. Yeah, I bet. Healthcare data is so personal, right? It needs that extra level of protection. What else are we doing to keep that information safe? A big one is de-identification techniques. Basically, that means removing anything that could personally identify someone before the data is shared, you know, for research or analysis. <laughs> it's like creating a coded version of your medical record that researchers can use without knowing it's actually you. That's really interesting. So it's about striking that balance between using data to improve healthcare while also protecting individual privacy. Are there any like regulations or laws that help ensure that balance? Oh, absolutely. In the US, for example, we have Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It sets some very strict rules for how health information can be used and shared. And, you know, these rules are always evolving to keep up with technology and make sure patient data is being handled responsibly. That's good to know. It's nice to know there are some safeguards in place. But I imagine that security isn't the only challenge when it comes to interoperability. What else is standing in the way of this vision of a truly connected healthcare system? Yeah, you're right. Security is just one piece of the puzzle. Another big challenge is just how complex the healthcare landscape is. Yeah. I mean, think about all the different electronic health record systems, medical devices, and software out there. They've often been developed independently, you know, without interoperability in mind. So it's like trying to force together puzzle pieces from different sets. They might look similar, but they just won't fit together perfectly. Exactly. And that lack of standardization can really slow us down. It's like everyone's trying to have a conversation, but they're all speaking slightly different dialects. You know, you can communicate, but it takes more effort and there's a lot more room for misinterpretations. I can imagine that being frustrating, both for healthcare providers trying to access information and for patients who, you know, might be negatively impacted because of those communication breakdowns. It is a concern. And it's not just about different systems being able to talk to each other. It's also making sure the data itself is formatted consistently and, you know, structured in a similar way. Like if one system records a patient's blood pressure in millimeters of mercury and another uses kilopascals, that could cause confusion and, you know, even lead to dangerous mistakes. It makes me think of that saying garbage in, garbage out. If the data isn't clean and standardized to begin with, it won't be very helpful no matter how connected everything is. That's exactly right. Data quality is crucial if we want interoperability to actually work. And that's where those standards we were talking about earlier, like HL7, FHIR, become really important. They provide a common language, you know, a set of rules that everyone can follow so we can make sure that data is structured and shared consistently. So it's like creating a shared playbook for healthcare data, making sure everyone's on the same page. But even with those standards, I imagine there are still some hurdles to overcome, right? What are some of the challenges we're still working on? 
One of the biggest is cost, honestly. Implementing these standards can be expensive and complex. For a lot of healthcare providers, especially smaller practices, upgrading their systems and you know, getting everything aligned with interoperability requirements can be a real financial burden. It's like trying to remodel your house while you're still living in it. I imagine it can be disruptive, expensive, and just hard to coordinate. Plus, there's a learning curve, right? Staff have to adapt to new systems and workflows. You got it. There are a lot of different aspects to this challenge, and there's the human element, too. Mm -hmm. Not everyone loves technology, and you know some healthcare providers might be hesitant to change. So it's important to address those concerns, provide training and support, and really show everyone the value that interoperability can bring. It sounds like a huge undertaking. It involves technology, policy, finances, and even you know culture change within the healthcare industry. You're right, it is. But the potential benefits are just so big, you know. It's worth the effort. We're talking about transforming healthcare, making it more efficient, more personalized, and ultimately more effective for everyone. Okay, I'm starting to see the bigger picture. We've covered the challenges, security, complexity, cost, even just people's resistance to change. But I want to know about the flip side of that. What are some of the really exciting possibilities that interoperability opens up? What could healthcare look like in a truly interoperable world? That's what we're going to talk about next. Get ready for a glimpse into the future of healthcare. Data flows freely, patients are empowered, and technology is playing a huge role in improving lives. We're back for the last part of our deep dive, and I'm ready to hear about all the possibilities of interoperability. We've talked about what it is, why it matters, and even some of the tough parts. But now I want to know about the potential, you know? Yeah. What does the future of healthcare look like in a world where data just flows freely? Okay, so imagine a world where your medical records aren't just these static files, you know, but they're actually dynamic tools, tools that empower you and your doctors. Like imagine you're traveling and you need to see a doctor. You could just instantly give them access to your whole medical history, allergies, meds, the whole picture right from your phone. No more racking your brain trying to remember every detail or, you know, explaining your complicated medical history to a complete stranger. That would be life changing, honestly, especially for someone like me, you know, who always forgets those little details under pressure. It would just take so much of the stress and guesswork out of getting care, especially in an emergency situation. Exactly. And that's really just the beginning. Think about what this kind of data sharing could mean for people managing chronic conditions. Like imagine someone with diabetes, their glucose monitor could send readings directly to their doctor. The doctor could adjust their insulin dosage remotely maybe even prevent a dangerous spike or drop in their blood sugar. It's almost like having this like virtual guardian angel watching over your health, making sure you're always getting the best care possible. It sounds straight out of science fiction. Well, the future is coming faster than we think. We're already seeing these remote monitoring systems being used for things like heart failure. Doctors can track their patients' vital signs and you know, they can step in early if they see any red flags. It's amazing to think about how technology can empower patients and providers at the same time, you know? Mm -hmm. It's making healthcare more proactive and personalized. It seems like we're moving away from just waiting for things to go wrong before we do something. That's the whole idea behind interoperability, to make that shift. And it's not just about improving outcomes, it's also about making healthcare more efficient. Think about all the time and money that's wasted on duplicate tests or procedures that weren't really needed, all because different providers don't have the same information. Interoperability eliminates those redundancies and makes everything flow more smoothly. So it really is a win-win for both patients and providers. Yeah. But I'm also wondering about the impact on medical research. You know, with all this data moving around freely and securely, it seems like there would be so many new opportunities to understand and treat diseases. Oh, yeah. That's a really exciting area. Imagine researchers having access to data from millions of patients, all de-identified, of course. They could study disease patterns, identify genetic markers, develop new treatments, all at a scale we've never seen before. It could totally change how we approach things like drug discovery and clinical trials. It feels like we're on the edge of a whole new era in healthcare, one that's driven by data and powered by technology. But I also want to talk about the ethical side of this. With all this information sharing, how do we make sure it's being used responsibly? How do we protect people's rights? That's a really important question, and it's something we absolutely have to consider as we move forward. Transparency and patient control are key. Patients need to know how their data is being used. 
They should have the power to say yes or no to sharing their information. It's all about making sure individuals are in control of their health care, not just data points in a system. It's definitely a balancing act, but it sounds like it's possible with the right precautions. It's amazing to think about the potential of this new era, you know, yeah. healthcare that's more personalized, proactive, and really focused on people's well-being. But as we're wrapping up, I have one last question for you. What's the one thing you want listeners to take away from this deep dive? I want them to walk away, understanding that interoperability isn't just some technical concept. It's a movement, really, that has the power to completely change healthcare. It's about connecting all the dots, you know, breaking down those walls and creating a system that really puts patients first. And the best part is we're just getting started. The future of healthcare is being shaped right now. It's a future where data empowers, technology helps us heal, and everyone has the chance to live a healthier and more fulfilling life. That's a great message. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey into the world of healthcare interoperability. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and let's all work together to create the future of healthcare we want to see.